Hey guys, Man here with another video for you. So this one is on Theorycraft, and I know you guys have been waiting for this one for a little while, those of you who are a fan of my last Theorycraft video. So the subject of this video is going to be about on foot and infantry combat, and if you want to go down that road in the game, then there's a lot of things and dangers you have to be aware of, and uh, the, you know, the sooner you're aware of these dangers, then the better prepared you are to survive in these sort of scenarios. So we're going to dive right into a group I'd say of three different types of combat scenarios you may find yourself in. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started. So without uh, further ado, let's get going. So in number uh, number one, number situation number one, you may find yourself in. So you're you're just starting out the infantry combat profession in the game. You want to be an infantry soldier. You don't necessarily want to be a starship pilot or whatever. Your primary role is to shoot stuff in the face. So you will need to find a job, of course. Um, there will be NPC ships and player ships which may have jobs available as security to stand on board their ships and uh, protect them against pirates, uh, like boarding action and stuff like this. So if you're going to be a marine or uh, a marauder or whatever you want to be, please uh, remember that you will also need to become very proficient at turret gunning because in order to find work and uh, lots of it, more often than not, you're going to need to fill the multitude of roles, whether it be a ship gunner and then immediately get off the turret and prepare to rebel, uh, repel borders and things like this. So, you want to be an infantry soldier, you say. So, let's say you get a job on board a, uh, a whole sea. So you're now on board this whole sea, and you're uh, you're basically a marine, and your job is to repel borders. Nine times out of ten, there may not be any significant action that happens, especially in the earlier days of the game. You'll basically be getting a, a, a free truck ride from A to B, and be getting paid for it. Um, the pay will be pretty good, considering the only things you're going to really want to upkeep is your armor and your weapons, and upgrade those items, and you know, get better equipment as time goes on. There's going to be this whole variety of equipment, such as grenades, EMP grenades. You're going to be able to use special deployables, such as a small shield wall, um, a deployable gun turret, all sorts of crazy stuff you'll be able to deploy. Um, so that's where your main focus in terms of your investment of your credits is going to go. That's what you're going to direct your money towards. One of the main things here, though, to remember is you're going to have to really have your wits about you because there is more than a million ways you can possibly die. Um, whether it is the ship is destroyed, you're standing in the wrong compartment at the wrong time and that area gets blown up and you, you're toast. Or maybe you're on a ship gun turret and the turret is literally picked off of the ship by accurate gunfire and you're toast again. Um, and the list goes on. I could, I could go on about this stuff for ages, but we'll save that for situation number two. So situation number one is you are waiting at a truck stop for a job, you are advertising that you're a, you know, infantry specialist, and your first job is, hey, this whole, uh, whole sea needs protection and the uh, the captain says hey I've got a job for you you can come aboard my ship and uh, I'm planning on going through some dangerous areas of space um, which are known to have lots of pirate activity I could really use someone to repel borders that has like at least proficient at defending my ship because I don't want to lose my ship and my cargo that's where you come in you say okay I'll take the job right so one of the key things you're gonna need to remember now once you've got this job is Right, the layout of the ship. Well, as soon as you get on board that vessel, you're going to really want to have a good look around, a good walk around, and try and memorize the layout, memorize any choke points uh, near any of the exits or turrets. Now remember, not remote turrets, but manned turrets can become entry points if they are blown off of the ship. So you're now memorizing the layout of this ship. You've got it stored in your head, it's ingrained in your memory. Now you're gonna need to remember a lot of other things, such as your first person combat skills, your your ability to shoot other people in the face better than they can shoot you in the face. Your ability to use cover and manipulate it to your advantage is gonna really play a key role. Because chances are it's gonna be you and a bunch of the crew members who are not necessarily uh, trained or equipped for first-person combat in the early days of the game anyway. And you're going to be their primary line of defense. You and you alone. And you're going to be facing, a, chances are, a group of four guys or five that are going to be coming through that airlock and maybe all the other airlocks at the same time who are really out there to basically kill you and the crew. 
These guys are a a better trained than the crew members you have. They're better trained and better equipped than the uh, fellow members of the crew of the ship that you're on. So at the end of the day, you are the first and last line of defense. So what does this mean now? Right, so when the ship enters, let's, let's give the scenario, let's break it down now. The whole sea is cruising through space. It's about, I don't know, maybe two jumps away from its destination. You're on the last leg of the journey and you're going through the most dangerous part. You get pulled out. It's a cutlass fully loaded with guys and a couple of buccaneers and a caterpillar. Now the buccaneers do a few strafing runs um, on the ship. They target the engines, they knock out some of the power, they destroy a lot of the cargo containers which are stored on the outside and blow them off of the ship. The caterpillar is now getting those put into its cargo hold. There's not much you can do about that. When it comes to the cargo on the whole series, you don't you don't really have a chance to defend that um, when you're under attack. So this ship has gone in without escorts, and that was a very bad idea. But what it does have is you. Now, the Cutlass is now docking to, uh, let's say, one of the turrets, which has been blown clean off the ship. Um, a man turret, or even better, let's say an airlock. Let's go with that. So the Cutlass is the Cutlass Black is now docking the airlock, and the chances are there's going to be a few Marines in there, or well, the pirate equivalent, so Marauders, a few guys in there that are ready to crack some skulls. Um, so they lower their ramp, they EVA out to your docking collar, they they hack the door, or they just simply blow it open. Now you've got a new situation on your hands. Some of the crew may not be wearing suits, so they're now immediately dead. Um, you're going to have to decide where you're going to set up choke points. Whether it's right at the door or further down the corridor is down to you. So let's say it's further down the corridor, so it's you and a few other guys. You're going to have to tell them where to stand and where to position themselves to give them the best chance of defense. Think of that scene in uh, Star Wars when Darth Vader is boarding the rebel ship where Princess Leia is on. And the guys are trying to defend the, uh, the airlock against the stormtroopers. Think of something like that. So. Let's say the battle starts, these guys, these marauders are... Let's say the the attackers are uncoordinated, so they run on the ship and uh, your guys immediately start firing and there's you and your full marine power armor and you're ready to go, your gun with all the attachments. Immediately the first thing you're going to want to do when these guys come around the corner is throw a grenade, right? Especially if these guys are just going to be stupid enough to run through the corridor. So you throw your grenade, and a couple of guys cop the grenade and they drop on the floor. Um, they're immediately downed. One is killed outright. You've completely decimated him. Now, there's two more dudes who are going to take cover and start firing. Two of your crew members have just dropped dead at either side of you. You're going to probably now have to reposition. Or you can use one of your many gadgets. But at this point in the game, I don't think you'll have many with the terms of money you'll be earning. So, let's say you're now firing back and you're trying to assault them. Bullets flying around everywhere. Best thing you can do at this very moment is to tell the captain to cut power to the lights inside the ship, immediately cut the lights on your command. That way it'll throw these guys into a complete disarray, these marauders who are now on board your ship running around trying to cause chaos. Well, it's not your ship, but the ship you're defending, so let's just say it's your ship for now. So turn off the lights. You've become prepared for this, so you're ready for them to turn off the lights. The second the lights go off, you chuck another grenade, and boom, there you go, you've got another guy who was unaware of what's going on with a sudden change in the environment. You're going to want to keep your lights off on your suit um, and look for their lights. And just line up your gun to where the lights are coming from. So there's one enemy dude left and he's a bit disoriented. He turns on his lights and bingo, you're now able to take him out. So you've killed him and you've suffered no damage yourself. But the crew members, a lot of them are, are dead. Um, the guys who try to help you defend the airlock or the hallway are toast. Um, because they aren't necessarily trained or equipped. They're only wearing flight suits. They didn't have armor like you did. You took a couple of glancing blows, but it's no big deal. But let's say your suit is punctured in that conflict. Well, then you've got a med pen. Fair enough. There you go. You're healed up and you're ready to go. So then in situation one, you've defended your ship. The, the captain now has power of the ship. He jumps out with some of his cargo, not all of it. A bunch of dead crew members. But you did your job. You defended the ship from boarding, so you still get paid your full amount. And for you, the mission is a success. Not so much for the uh, captain of the Hall C, but hey, you did your job. You protected him and his ship from basically being stolen. So good on you. You did your job. Mission one successful. Congrats. You've now earned a little bit of money. So with your little bit of money, what do you spend it on? Well, you could buy a fancy new gun and some upgrades. Why not, right? Well, my advice to you would be hold off from that. Buy medical equipment. 
Right, so medical equipment. You may be thinking, why would you want to buy medical equipment instead of a fancy new gun with all the upgrades? Well, or some new armor, perhaps, because, you know, wear and tear is a thing for weapons and equipment and armor. Well, I'd say medical equipment for a few reasons. Those med pens, they ain't gonna work forever. They've already explained this in healing your spaceman and all this stuff. Med pens are not a permanent solution. Eventually, your body will become immune to them. Basically, if you keep using med pens in the full game, as of right now in 3.0, you can just use them as many times as you want. There's no real consequence. In the full game, however, your character eventually will stop responding to them. So you'll use a med pen when you're bleeding out, and it won't heal you. You'll need more advanced medical equipment. And there is various different versions of like equipment and things like that. Like, um, you can get the deluxe medical device if you really need it. Like, um, let's go over some of the medical devices here. There will be two types of ways for players to be healed through field tech and intensive systems that can only be provided by med bays or med stations. In short, if you are in a combat area, you cannot be healed to your full capacity. When seriously injured, you must take your character through the process of proper recovery. Field tech uh, are gadgets that can be carried by players or NPCs that are capable of providing temporary healing for a variety of wounds. They will nullify pain, stop bleeding, restore vital systems, and uh, calm body systems to states where the person can function again. Gadget aids cannot rebuild tissue, but can provide enough white blood cell replacements to heal up small wounds at an extremely fast pace. One such uh, example is the Dynapack from Cure Life, which is a complete uh, multifunction individual first aid system designed and constructed for the rigors of field use. With Cure Life's preparatory serum, the single Dynapack will promote healing and non serious wounds to get you back on your feet. Intensive systems are medical services that can only be found in med bays and hospitals capable of handling much more serious wounds. Therefore, full-size medical stations um, and immersion chambers outfitted with technology to rebuild tissue, replace blood, and perform other operations through advanced 3D printing technology. There are even new systems such as the Calope, uh, which are capable of completely reconstructing a person's appearance. Player's overall health status is essentially the state of all your limbs combined. As each limb goes through their various stages of damage, your overall health status can quickly change. Your health status does not change linearly, and as it quickly becomes fatal at an exceptional rate. For instance, if it is your head, there's not much uh, in terms of a medical device that can save you. So that gives you guys a rough idea of how you're going to take damage and heal up and things like that in the full game. So you've got to be careful. Each time you go on board a ship or out on a mission, it could be your last. So let's go for another scenario. So there's a group of explorers, or uh, even miners, let's say. Let's say a mining outfit, and uh, they have an outpost on a planet. But it's very close by, in terms of it's four kilometers away from a pirate outpost. It's a a base that a group of pirate players have put money in the game to build and they've built this outpost just outside your mining facility and it's a real stroke of bad luck but you're a marine and you're meant to handle this type of stuff right I mean you survived the the dangers of the Hall Sea adventure and uh, the lone survivor of crew bay number five and all sorts of other various conflicts you may have been through maybe it might be the brawl bar of I don't know Iridian 5 where you survived as waves and waves of drunken patreons tried to kill you there could be all sorts of various situations you find yourself in but this is going to be a tough one, and I'll explain for a multitude of reasons. So you're now on board this shuttle, this ship, which is going down to this mining outpost, and uh, the pirates have done a couple of raids, and they're preparing for a third and final raid to take this place. And you've been hired as hired help to basically defend this place. You and a group of other guys who have also been hired, mercenaries, um, gunmen, bounty hunters, all sorts of different guys have been hired together, and you're a marine, and you've been hired to come along and do the job. So you're in this shuttle now with these guys, you're all talking amongst yourselves, you've all got your own armor and your own equipment, each guy looking as like wild and different to the next with your customized armor, um, each tailored to each person's playstyle. Maybe a guy has a rail gun on his back and he has um, an SMG, you have your assault rifle and your shotgun, and then it's some other guy who has some other weapons. Maybe you have another guy who's a sniper. Best thing to do in that scenario 
when you touch down the ground is to get a layout of the area. Yet again, always know the layout of the battlefield. This is very important. Doesn't matter if it's the inside of a ship, a space station, or a planetary surface. Knowing where that one rock is so you can take cover behind it from any enemy snipers is important because if you don't know where there is a viable source of cover from each direction of fire, then you're basically standing in the open with your pants down, which is not going to last too long. So we're going to go over this here and really dive into what happens. So you land on the ground. You've got a few med pains with you. You've already used one, but you haven't been to a medical station. So your body, let's say you've got at least three or four more goes of this med pen in you. So you touch down, you and the other dudes all get a good idea of what's going on, like, um, and the pirates now start their offensive. Now when the pirates start their offensive, it's important to take cover, because if you don't, you're going to get hit by a size 1 or, god forbid, a size 3 and beyond weapon. If that happens, you're toast. Perma dead, it's over, game over, arriva de bon voyage, beneficiary time, it's, it's game over. So you've now got the lay of the land, the pirates do their strafing runs, they take out the AA defensive weapons, they spray their weapons all over the place and uh, light up the ground. And one of these mercenaries you were with was a little bit too cocky. That says the guy with the, the railgun. He runs out and he pulls out his railgun and he's like, oh, it's just a couple of uh, gladiuses and a buccaneer, I've got this. And uh, he fires his railgun, he alerts the enemy of his position, the railgun shot flies through, hits one of the gladiuses, bounces off the shield and does barely any damage. Or it takes off a wing. Let's say it takes off a wing. So that gladius is now spinning under control, collides to the ground and explodes. One kill for the good guys, right? Well, let's say that happens. You kill the gladius. Well, this dude has. That you're watching out of this window and you're telling him, hey man, get your ass back in here. And then boom, that's it. He's now been hit by two size fours and two size two weapons and he is toast long gone dead bam arrivederci blasted out into the surface he's gone now that's one less dude to stop the infantry attacks those ships are only going to do a few strafing runs because there's no way in hell they're going to try and do strafing runs of their own dudes in there so now the pirates you see a couple of vehicles coming in it's uh, some of those new little buggy truck things with the turrets on the back what are you going to do huh what are you going to do when a bunch of those guys come along? Because you've just lo lost your heavy weapons guy. Well, these vehicles, they're only dangerous when you're out in the open. They're not dangerous when, you know, you're inside a building or you're inside an outpost. Or if you're behind a rock and you're hiding. Like maybe you're uh, you're taking cover and they can't see you. They don't know where, they are, where you are. And the ships, for like, you know, no, there's no way the ships are going to be able to spot the guys on the ground. You know, they're moving too fast, and they're too high up. They're going to have to get really low to see guys with any detail. So the only things the ships can really target is other things targeting them, such as AA weapons, because they can trace where the shots have come back to, the general area. And they can target the buildings, but they can't really do too much damage to those, as of right now, anyway, as we know. So let's say the ships have now all flown off, and a couple of those uh, tumbrel cyclones with the guns on the back have come tumbling in and uh, they're spraying fire. One of them's come in and they've dropped off a bunch of dudes and maybe an Ursa rover and that's dropped off some more guys. So you got 10 marauders running towards the base. Now this is the point where the sniper has to remain far away. Maybe he starts picking off some guys. One of the cyclones figures out where the gunfire is coming from. It drives up there and he gets whacked and nuked. Now in this sort of a scenario, you're going to be dead either way. It doesn't matter how good a fighter you are unless reinforcements are going to arrive. So let's say you got four minutes until... Uh, the guy who owns a mining outpost, Buddy, comes along with, um, let's say, a hammerhead or something fancy like that. So you've got to hold out for four minutes. Now, you got to remember, those med pens ain't going to last forever. The armor is not going to last forever. And let's make things a little harder. That planetary environment is hostile. So if your suit gets a puncture, there's only so much you can do. If your suit gets multiple punctures and your suit gets wrecked, and so does your limbs, you're a dead man. There's no way out. You've got a limited supply of oxygen. How you use your stamina will de uh, depend on, like, will determine how much oxygen you have left. So you're running around and you're trying to pick off marauders left, right, and center, like something out of Rogue One. You're running around capping guys and everything's going well and you're feeling the force. Then what happens if they start bringing out more heavy weapons and they or they say, hey, you know what? I've got an idea. Let's just completely saturate the building with fire and see what happens. So that happens bunch of the marks get killed and it's now just you and against you're fighting say four guys four guys with air support and a couple of tumbrel cyclones running around doing strafing runs how are you gonna kill them 
Well, if you have the medical equipment, then you're going to outlast them, because all you're going to do is puncture their shoot, uh, suits multiple times, and chances are these guys won't have enough med pens to uh, keep themselves going in a, a varied combat environment. If you can set yourself up in that outpost in such a way, and it is possible, you see it in many first-person shooters, that you can bottleneck them where they can't get you, you're going to be laughing, because they can't get in the building. So the four minutes have gone by, the hammerhead comes in, completely nukes the fighters, and chases his tumbrel cyclones back to their outpost, and the counterattack begins, and you win and you get paid. Well, what was the moral of the story there? One, play as a team. Do not run off on your own. Two, have enough medical supplies to outlast your enemy, but make sure you don't want to take damage. Do not put yourself in positions to take damage. It's pointless. If you try to tank the enemy, then you're going to lose in a game like Star Citizen, especially if it's a game of, like, a, like a war of attrition and that sort of a scenario. So you survive this next conflict, and you decide, you know what, I've used about three shots of this med pen, I, I can just buy a couple more med pens. You buy more med pens. You've now bought a better suit of armor. You're now wearing heavy armor, which you've not used before. And you've now got a better gun, better upgrades. Third and final scenario. You get hired by some pirates, because you're a marine, you don't care. Well, you go where the money goes. And you've been hired to uh, work with these pirate group. And they've said, listen, we need hired guns to basically board this ship and, you know, kill the crew so we could take it. So you're now feeling cocky, you're feeling invincible, you've got this heavy armor, you've got this med pen, you've got all this equipment. And you're in the back of a cutlass, you're there with a bunch of other dudes who have been hired, maybe you recognize a couple of faces, you start spinning some jokes, having a good time, things are going good, you're closing in on your target. They've successfully done their strafing run, and let's see, what kind of a ship are we going to use as an example here? I know, let's use a, uh, a 600i. There you go, a 600i. Your guys have advanced on the 600i, they're attacking it, and you're now being deployed to board this thing. You're now boarding this thing, your, uh, your guys have managed to take out the turrets and stuff. So you climb aboard, immediately two of the marauders in front of you cop it because this guy has got security, and these guys are now fighting back, they're marines, uh, conflict ensues, but you're feeling good. You've got this heavy armor, you've got this big old gun in front of you, you've got an LMG, let's say. And you've got grenades, you throw your EMP grenades, the lights go out, you look for where the lights come from, and you see a couple of lights perk on and you start firing, you're using your laser weapon. Now, because you're using your weapon at a couple of the guys, you can't see where all of them are, there's a couple of dudes on the opposing side, a defenders who are smart, and they're seeing where the laser fire is coming from, and they shoot back at you, and they hit you bad, and you get hurt pretty bad, and you can't run too fast because you're wearing heavy armor, and your pulse is accelerating, the ship is depressurized, your oxygen counter is going down fast, your suit's punctured, you quickly find cover, you use your med pen, the lights go back on, and you've healed yourself, and then you're still feeling that, hey, you know, lucky shot, you know what I mean? I've been through God knows what, and these guys haven't been through anything. You know, I'm I'm Mr. Tough Guy. So you walk back out there, and you're pissed. You fire LMG, and you immediately gun down one of these guys in light armor. You chew him up real bad, he drops dead. Uh, you down another guy, but they, they drag him away and heal him up. So the conflict is now a full swing. The rest of the marauders are also firing. The engagement's really going wild. But these guys know the layout of their ship better than you do. You haven't been on a 600i before. And they deploy a couple of turrets behind you. And I'll show a picture on the screen now of these turrets you can deploy. And they start wailing on your dudes. You're now stuck between a rock and a hard place. And you're now questioning your life choices. Why didn't I just become a cargo loader instead? And bullets are flying everywhere. Rounds are shredding through the interior of the ship. And because it's a 600i, let's be honest. These dudes who are defending it are going to be really tough and well kitted out. And there's going to be a lot of them. So these dudes, they're tactical, they're smart, they know the layout of the ship, they're being paid a lot more than you are, and they know exactly where you're hiding. It's you alone. The Cutlass has abandoned you because you decided to take a job from pirates. The pirates attack has failed, they've bailed on you, you and a couple of other dudes have been left behind, the other dude you've been left with was gunned down, running across the corridor to get to you by these turrets which were set up. And now the marines close in on you. What do you do? Well, you can chuck an EMP grenade, so you throw that, you shut down those turrets, and you try to reposition. You get hit, you get hit in the leg pretty bad, but you, you know, you're able to suppress the enemy, and let's say you down a couple more guys, so they're now healing up and trying to help each other. And it's you alone. You got no way out, so you got one opportunity here, it's to take the ship or die. Victory or death, let's do this. So you lock and load your gun, you check how many grenades you got, you got enough med pens to survive, you've forgotten about the times you've used them. 
you jab it in your leg, it heals you up, but that's the last time it's gonna work. But you don't quite know this, so you walk out there and you're like, alright, come on, come get some. And you, you throw another EMP grenade, you shut down the lights in there, you, you freaking start wailing on him, you knock out the pilot, you kill him immediately, another guy, the, uh, the guy who plots the course, let's say, or a gunner, he gets hit in the face, you take him out, you're feeling real good, you knock down another marine, things are going great, and then the captain comes up behind you, pumps a couple of rounds of shotgun into you, you take a little bit of damage because you have your armor, you spin around, you know, lay him down like something out of the Terminator, and then boom, the rest of the marines close on you like, like white on rice, and they start spraying at you, your armor's getting lit up, you're getting wounded all over, and you're ready to, ready to drop, and you're firing like crazy, and you immediately duck into cover. You're bleeding bad, and you're badly damaged, your armor's toast, you're wounded, but you still think, hey, I've got enough med pens, I can do this. You inject yourself with your med pen, and it doesn't work. Because you did not stop off at a Cutlass Red, or a Hope Class Endeavor, or a hospital facility on board a space station. You decided, nah, I don't need to spend money on that, I'll just buy more med pens. So you're there, bleeding out, in the corner of this ship. Eventually your character then goes into the downed animation, so your character's downed. And that's going to be something that I'll ex elaborate on further in the future. So you're downed, and you're on the ground, and there's not much you can do. You're just there with a pistol in your hand, the marines... They're busy helping each other up, because when you get wounded, you'll go down, unless you take a various amount of damage, where you'll just be killed outright. So, they're helping each other up, and they're looking after each other, and now they're closing in on your location. And they know you're downed, so they can just take their time. They walk around the corner, you're firing your pistol to keep them at bay, you don't beg for your life, because, you know, nah, screw that, right? You know, like, I'm going down like a man. <laughs> so, you get out your pistol, you p start copping off rounds, holding them at bay, and then you realize you're out of ammo, and that's the point where they walk around the corner. They take one long look at you. Instead of killing you, they decide to arrest you. They put you in the back. They they, they heal you up to the point where, you know, you can be basically moved around and stuff. They, they stabilize you because of the medical station on board their ship. And that's it. You're now being carted off to the advocacy jail. And that is a theory craft story for another time. So basically, the moral of the story here is, if you're going to be a marine, or infantry fighter, marauder, you you name it, make sure you know who you're being hired by. You check their background. If it's pirates, you got to know that the chances are they're going to bail on you when the crap hits the fan, because that way they don't got to pay you. Um, equipment, always have your equipment after each mission. If you do take damage, immediately go to a medical station, even if it means spending half of the money you earned getting your body cleaned up completely and re, re repaired so that way metapens are just as effective as they were the first time you'd use them so just detox your body and get fixed up that way that way when you do get caught in the crap and you want to use your med pens you can use them at least five or six times before you can't use them anymore and each one will count tremendously ammunition always make sure you have enough ammo weapons make sure you have the right ammo and weapons armor make sure you have the right armor that's what you're gonna have to really focus on here guys first person equipment is just as in-depth as the ships themselves in star citizen so please please uh, really take a good look at all the equipment and all the devices, the EMP grenades, the incendiary grenades, all this stuff. Really take a good look at it. And remember, when you shoot guys, they won't necessarily die. They will go down in the full game. You won't kill them right out. Like right now in 3.0 and Star Marine, you shoot someone, they die. Well, in the full game, that's not the way it's going to work. Eventually, players will go down. There's different ways you can drag people once they're down. You, laying on their back, they can be dragged by their shoulders. Number two, laying on their back, being dragged by their feet. Number three, laying on their stomach, being dragged by their shoulders. And maybe, number four, laying on their stomach, being dragged by their feet. When you go down, you can be dragged by other players to safety. So that means you can be fixed up. So, moral of the story here is, if you really, really want to be a Marine... There's two ways you can go about it, guys, or Marauder. You can join an organization, and you can join their infantry division if they have one. Very few organizations have this. Um, so you've got to find the right organization for you. You can be a Marauder, make sure you find a, a, a decent part organization if you want to be a pirate infantryman, and uh, find one that's decent and that will actually look after you. Good thing to do is to join them now and make friends with them and create that bond now because I see part organizations in the verse especially ones formed after release, will only be bonded by one thing, and that is money and credits, not by friendship. So you're going to be really have to really have your wits about you and who you join. Other organizations such as PMCs might just leave you out to hang out to dry as much as anybody else. You have to really be careful of who you're joining. 
But if you want to be freelance, then you're going to have to really rely upon your own wits and yourself. But freelance means you earn more money, perhaps. Um, the jobs that are open to you, you can play the, play the field. You can fight for both sides. It doesn't matter. You're just there for the money. A lot like a mercenary or a bounty hunter. So you're going to have to really worry about... The, the main thing you're going to worry about is who's going to be hiring you, what's the job at hand, is it going to pay enough? you got to look at profit, costs, and, uh, you know, savings. What, what are you going to make? Like, what's how much are you making? How much is it going to cost you to do this if you do use all of your resources? And how much are you going to be able to store? So, yeah. Uh, that pretty much covers it, guys, uh, for this Theorycraft video. The Adventures of the Mercenary are yet to continue in the next Theorycraft video, which I will do all about the prison system and mercenaries and bounty hunters and all that good stuff. So we'll continue it there. And so far in this Theorycraft story, our mercenary has gone through, or our bounty hunter has gone through a lot of stuff. He wants to be a marine. He had a few battles here and there. He felt confident, got overconfident sided with the wrong guys and they dropped him in the crap and now he's on his way to an advocacy jail and that's where we will pick up the next theorycraft video next time thank you guys for watching this has been another theorycraft video i just want to really give you an idea of the scenarios you might find yourself in really immerse yourself in the story and get you wrapped up into it and uh, give you an idea of what's going to happen and what are the dangers and the positive sides. Positive sides are money. Money is going to be thick and fast if you can get good work. And your maintenance is going to be relatively low. Cons are you can end up permadead. So, you know, your battle of two extremes. But yeah, it's a really interesting role. I see a lot of guys wanting to do it. If you do want to be a marine here, and I'm going to have to do some shameless self-promoting. But yeah, <laughs> if you do want to be a marine, a dedicated marine, then you can join the organization I run called Death Corp. We actually already have an infantry division. We have quite a few marines. We have a reservist role for those who want to be traders, but also want to do first-person combat. So, you know, first-person combat is not their primary role, but it is something they can still do within the organization. And then we have dedicated marines, which are our elite unit. And um, that's for people who are really focused on the infantry first-person element of the game. They can join the org and do that. And we actually have training, all sorts of various things that'll help you. And one thing is we never leave a man behind. So, you know, all that sort of stuff. We have real ex-military guys and currently serving guys doing this sort of stuff for the organization, setting up training and things like that. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching the video. I'll put a link to the organization in the description below. Um... So yeah, this has been another Theorycraft video. Thank you for watching. You know the drill commanders. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.